Hi, I'm Joe McMillan. I'm an associate teaching professor in the Faculty of Science, where I teach physics and astronomy at Ontario Tech. And today I'd like to talk to you about using a light board for uh, engaging video lectures. Now, what exactly is a light board? Well, let me demonstrate I am writing on a light board right now. And so a light board is basically just, in my case, a piece of plexiglass that I am writing on with bright markers. That's pretty much all there is to it, but I'll go into detail about all the materials uh, in, a, in a second. Now, a light board like this, I made myself, but you can, in fact, buy them as well. And, uh, and I'll show you a couple examples. Uh, this example right here you can buy is from a company called Learning Glass. Thousands and thousands of dollars. It's a little bit nicer than the one I have, but it's still super expensive. And then there's this other company, Revolution, sells them as well. Those are also thousands and thousands of dollars. And so uh, thinking that this particular uh, thing was kind of cool, I decided to go ahead and build one myself. I'm currently producing videos right now for our Physics 2 summer class. I'm about to start producing videos for our Physics 1 class coming up in the fall, and I'm really enjoying it. I think it's been really uh, a really good experience experience. So let me tell you a little bit about how we can build one. Now the light board I'm using right now is actually version 3 and so I'm going to start out by how I built version 1 because it was the simplest and cheapest uh, light board that I was able to build. And so it starts with just a table. This is just originally a tabletop kind of thing and, uh, and so here is my very bad drawing of a table and basically I had a table uh, in my house already and so what I did is I went out and purchased a piece of plexiglass this is a two by four piece of, uh, of plexiglass from Home Depot or Lowe's I can't remember which one and uh, and so there's a piece of plexiglass there and all I did was I held it in place on the table with a couple of shelf brackets and uh, and those shelving brackets held it nice and sturdy they were pretty pretty decent ones and uh, and that was it I sat on this side uh, over behind the uh, table, I had a webcam and the webcam was sitting on a tripod and the webcam was pointed at me. I was sitting on the opposite side of the table and uh, and I would sit down, I would write on the light board and it would uh, take some take video of me. Uh, this particular version had a little bit of lighting and lighting it turns out was the hardest issue to figure out for all of this. I had uh, an LED strip here on the table and an LED strip here on the board and this one on the board here on the plexiglass was meant to illuminate me. This one on the table was meant to illuminate the actual plexiglass itself to, uh, to make the writing really pop up when I wrote on it. And, uh, and that was pretty much all there was to it. No, that's not true. There's one other thing too, very important. And that is that back here, I had a, a black piece of fabric, a really big one. So uh, the background behind me was dark and there's one right here. Uh, you can't see the fabric itself. It's been, uh, it's, it's very dark back there. And so there's a lot of contrast, but it's really important to have a dark background so that you can see all of the writing. That's pretty much it for version one. The plexiglass itself was pretty expensive. It was over $200 for the two by four piece, but, and the shelf brackets weren't, weren't too much. They were 20 bucks or something. Uh, the fabric itself was, uh, you know, my wife is a sewer. And so she had some stuff laying around and we went out to the fabric store and got uh, something a little bigger. That wasn't very much. The webcam I already owned, the tripod I already owned. And so there's really like $300 or so worth of material in this particular version setup. Now this is a photo over here of me sitting at the, the table behind the table and you can see that uh, it doesn't look that good. And the main problem was the lighting. And so what I did for version two is I went out and I got some better lights. And so I bought some lights from Amazon and, uh, and so they're sort of here and here off to the side, they're on stands and they shone on me so that I would be brighter and have a greater contrast compared to the black behind me. In addition to that, I also got a fancier camera, an upgraded camera. I bought a, a mirrorless camera, a Canon camera that can do uh, good quality HD video. And that's really important because sometimes I like to write small and have a lot of detail here. And so having that HD quality video is really important to see uh, crisply all of those details. Um, and, and so the camera and the lights certainly kicked up my budget quite a bit, but I think even with version one, uh, 300 or so dollars, that's a pretty good first step. 
Uh, now this over here is an example of a video using my version two of the studio. This is how I made videos for our physics two class happening right now in the summer. And you can see the quality is much better than version one. Uh, but one of the things I really didn't like about my second version was the fact that I had to sit down and lecture and I'm very uncomfortable doing that. I really like to stand up, move around, wave my hands around, become animated. And I find that hard to do sitting down. And so for version three, I decided to build a stand for the plexiglass. This is what that looks like right here. This is what I'm using now. This didn't add a lot to the cost. Uh, again, the plexiglass, the uh, the lighting, the camera, those are the major costs. Uh, the the, uh, the two by fours that I made this out of are, are cheap. They're only a couple of dollars each, like a couple extra brackets. Uh, and those are also uh, really inexpensive. And, uh, and so uh, there was not a whole lot more to enable me to actually be able to move around and, uh, and lecture as I'm more comfortable doing. And so, uh, and so I've had a lot of fun with this light board and I didn't I actually had a lot of fun building it, putting it together uh, and designing everything, and <laughs> screwing everything together, making mistakes. Uh, the hardest thing about the, the building the light board is actually fiddling with the lighting and trying to get uh, all the lighting in the right place so that uh, it has a lot of contrast, me being bright, the background being dark. And, and it was tricky to do, but, uh, but eventually I got it working as you can see. Uh, and so that's it. That's how I built the light board. Um, making the editing process or <clears throat> doing the editing is actually really simple as well. So I'd like to talk a little bit about that. For editing, I used a program called Shotcut. And Shotcut, it's probably a capital C there. Shotcut. <laughs> Uh, Shotcut is an open source video editor, uh, which is nice. I like using open source where I can, and it runs on both Windows and Linux, which is really convenient. I do most of my video editing on Linux, but if I need to, I, I can run it on Windows as well. And uh, it has all the features I want, which is really good. So let me take you really quickly through editing uh, this video with Shotcut. So we'll go through this really quick. I've sped it up to two times just so that we don't have to watch me uh, boringly edit a video. Uh, but I do want to emphasize a couple things. So I'm making a project here. Um, and uh, what we'll do is drag all of the media clips that we need into what Shotcut calls the playlist. Then in order to actually start using them, we'll drag them into uh, what's called the timeline. It's going to make two video tracks, one that I'll call main and one that I'll call overlay. And, uh, and so we'll use those to put our clips into. You can see that I'm just dragging it in. That's pretty much it. Now, the most important thing is two important filters that we have to use on this. You can see that the writing is actually backwards, and that's because the camera's on the other side. So I'm going to mirror the screen, and the second thing I do there to make those blacks in the back really nice and uh, dark is to change the levels, change the black level a bit. That's pretty much all there is to editing. Now, if I wanted to add an overlay, right? Here's the photo of the, uh, the light board. I can change the size of it. I can change the position of it and, uh, and make it look, uh, there we go, like it's in the corner there. Um, and, uh, and so that's nice and simple to do. Uh, we can add some other ones if we like, and we can add more video clips from the camera and, uh, and transition them together. And I'll do that right now. And so here I'm putting it into the timeline. This is our second clip. And then I'm just editing a little bit off the front and back. Then I'll overlay them to make a transition. You can see that transition happening there really quickly. That's pretty much it. That's all there is to editing. It's not uh, super difficult. It's just a matter of putting the files that you want in the correct order onto the timeline, making sure you mirror it and uh, increase the black le level a bit. And, uh, and that's it. We're all done. As a last step, we're just going to export the file as an MP4. Uh, and uh, and that's it. That's all there is to it. And so once I have that MP4, I upload it to YouTube, and we're done. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to know about building and using and editing for a light board. I'll end off with a couple things that I think are important to take away. Um, one is that uh, I think light boards are are really cool. I think they look really neat. I think students really appreciate things that are kind of cool and different, and I think this fits the bill. Uh, secondly, and I can't stress this enough, it's easy to use. Right, if you're used to writing on a whiteboard, this is the same thing. In fact, it's, uh, you know, it's a little bit uh, easier to write on this, I think, than a, than a whiteboard, because I don't have to constantly turn around and take a look at the students. I know that they're on the other side here where the camera is. So it's nice and easy to use, very easy to transition to lecturing like this. And then lastly, as we just saw, there's, there's very little editing we have to do. Um, 
and so uh, the editing process goes really quick and, uh, and so you can produce your videos really quickly. And that's important in this pandemic time where we need to make a bunch of content that's very high quality uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and looks really good. Um, this is an important kind of step here, making a workflow that's really easy to use. And I think this fits the bill. So that's it for me. And, and so if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those live uh, through our session here. Uh, and if you're not sure, if you don't know, uh, um, have a question right now, you can always email me later uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, ask me anything about how I built it or how I use it. I'm happy to provide more detail in, uh, in those answers. And so let me know if you've got any questions.